Welcome to our presentation on the development of indicators for sustainable regional development in mountain areas. I am Teresa Tribaldos and together with Stefan Rist, I work at the UNESCO Chair on Mountain on Natural and Cultural Heritage for Sustainable Mountain Development, which is co-hosted by the Center for Development and Environment and the Institute of Geography at the University of Bern, as well as by the World Nature Forum in Natters and the Swiss Alps Jungfrau Alec World Heritage Foundation. Protected areas in mountains, such as parks or heritage sites, fulfill several functions and are seen to play a role for regional development. First of all, they guarantee the protection of natural resources, such as, for example, glaciers, which are a water reservoir for many lowland areas in the world. But they also protect cultural landscapes, institutions and local knowledge, as in this example from Valis, where you can see the Suonen, a hundred years old tradition um, of water channels for irrigation. In turn, parks and heritage sites promise to create jobs in tourism through hotels, restaurants, tour guides or others, and also in tourism related sectors such as agriculture for food provision or infrastructure such as roads or cable cars. But the question remains, what role sustainability plays in these, in these developments? How can we assess and decide whether a development is sustainable and has positive effects? We propose to see protected areas as social ecological systems that comprehensively protect natural resources, traditional and cultural landscapes, as well as related institutions and local forms of knowledge. These are characterized through feedbacks and interactions with their surrounding areas through time and space. Hence, they can give and receive inputs to sustainable regional development and in surrounding areas. This means protected areas must be planned and managed in a holistic way that not only supports ecological, but also economic and political sustainability. So, What's specific about mountain areas? To cut it short, they are especially vulnerable, not only to climate change, but uh, to natural disasters in general due to their topography. They present home to over 700 million people in the world, and they are diverse and rich in biodiversity, climates, and cultures. Furthermore, they hold water sources and reservoirs for many lowland areas and therefore deserve special attention and protection. Due to these facts, sustainable development is crucial in mountain areas. The SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, provide a normative framework for sustainable development. But up to now, it remains rather unclear how to implement them in mountain areas. So what is needed to implement sustainable development in mountain areas? Well, first of all, it is important to define what sustainable development means in mountain contexts and for mountain communities. Furthermore, it is important to develop a set of indicators that are globally comparable and that serve to assess situations in mountain areas in terms of sustainability that help to monitor change over time and to evaluate different types of development. Such a set of indicators will then build a basis for decision making. If we look, for example, at infrastructure in SDG 9, then the question comes up, what is a robust infrastructure in mountain areas? Does it look like these avalanche barriers, for example? I think it is not up to us scientists to decide this question. And this is why we suggest a transdisciplinary process for developing such indicators. They involve a lot of normative questions and strongly depend on individual and collective perceptions and interests of people living in mountain areas. In essence, this process is about negotiating compromises or if possible, even consensuses about sustainable futures negotiating normative questions in a truly participatory manner with affected people 
can help to set up fair and equitable processes that are more likely to lead to fair, equitable and sustainable outcomes as well. A transdisciplinary process can build the basis for such outcomes and parks and heritage sites as social ecological systems provide ideal locations for such processes due to their characteristics mentioned previously. I will now shortly introduce three examples that provide us with experiences for such a transdisciplinary process. The first example is a six-year R4D project that has looked at the assessment and support of food sustainability in different African and Latin American countries. The concept of food sustainability builds on five dimensions, which include food security in terms of access, availability, utilization and stability of food over time. Then the right to food as fundamental human right anchored in policy and legislation. Third, the reduction of poverty and inequality of food system actors. Fourth, decreasing environmental impacts and improving environmental performance of food systems. And finally, social ecological resilience of food systems in order to cope with external shocks. This concept was used in many case studies to define interventions in food systems towards more sustainability. The process included an assessment of the food system together with local communities, um, the elaboration of a collective plan and transformative actions, the inclusion of active networks and the renewed assessment of the situation. These processes take place at the interface between ecological and political contexts and therefore impact on managing landscapes, as well as participating in market and policy processes. The example provides us with valuable experiences about how to co-produce indicators with societal actors and the challenges we face in such processes. The second example is an ongoing inter- and transdisciplinary research project, which looks at justice aspects of the transitioning process in food systems towards sustainable, healthy and low carbon systems. Here, we look at how to conceptualize just transition in food systems. What environmental, economic and nutritional impacts it involves and who bears the burdens of this transition. The project includes a conceptual component dealing with concepts and criteria, the development of practical solutions together with different food system actors and policy makers, as well as policy recommendations. At the core of the policy component are regular and intense policy dialogues. This example provides us with conceptual knowledge about justice aspects in transitioning processes, as well as practical knowledge about what type of interventions and policy changes are helpful. And finally, the third example is planned for the coming months and will address sustainable regional food provision for mountain huts. Together with local actors and hut keepers in and around the Swiss Alps Jungfrau Alec heritage site, we will engage in questions around the meaning of sustainable regional food and opportunities and challenges of such food for hut keepers, their guests and other actors in the region. This example will help us to deepen our knowledge about the conditions of heritage sites in mountain areas in relation to sustainable regional development in mountain areas concerning food systems. I finish here and I'm looking forward to the discussion with you. Thank you very much for your attention.